In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint an imperial fist, which includes yellow power armour as well as all the different details and accessories you'll need to paint. Welcome to Tabbed Already, my name's Michael and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint imperial fists. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below, as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below and if you want to help support what I do you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you and I massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people as well. When building my miniatures I like to assemble them in sub-assemblies. This makes painting so much easier and allows you to get to the details you wouldn't be able to if the miniature was fully assembled. I've also chosen to undercoat my imperial fist with white scar spray. This is going to make painting the yellow armour so much easier. You could use wraith bone spray as well, it's up to you. So imperial fists are my favourite chapter. I love the history and lore behind them and I've had a lot of different imperial fist armies over the years and I've painted them in a lot of different ways but I've never really truly been happy with how they've turned out and recently I feel like I finally found a way that I really like to paint them and that's what I'm going to share with you in this tutorial. Through this tutorial I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your imperial fist painted and to make it easier to follow along with I've divided the steps into different chapters. The first thing we need to cover in this tutorial is painting the yellow power armour and the different stages of shading and highlighting. Let's get our base colour down first and to help get a nice smooth yellow there's a few things I want to show you. The yellow I like to use for Imperial Fist is Uriel Yellow and I recommend using a flat brush for your first initial layer because this spreads the paint out more evenly. As well you should be thinning your paints and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. I also like to remove excess paint from the brush as well on some kitchen paper, giving us better control over how much paint is applied to the miniature. Keep your brush moving and try not to go over any area you've already painted to prevent any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And because we thinned our paint, you'll see that it hasn't covered the miniature very well. So once your first layer is dry, we can now move to using a normal brush, which lets us be more intentional and get all the places we may have missed with a flat brush. Painting in multiple thin layers helps us get a strong smooth colour without losing any detail. Just remember to let each layer dry before repeating the process of painting a layer until you're happy with it. So I've just gone through some of the basics and fundamentals of painting miniatures and I can tell you that I always really notice a difference if I fail to follow these simple steps. So now we have our base colour, I want to get all the armour joints painted using a bad and black. I'm doing this now because I don't want to risk being messy and ruining any work we may have already done. If you are messy like me, you can just use some Corax white and then your real yellow to neaten up our mistakes. We're now ready to create definition and bring out all the details on the power armour. So we can see all the different shapes and details on the armour, I'm using Avalon Sunset and I'm applying this into all the recesses and around details. This is known as a recess shade. A recess shade is different from a wash because we can create shadows and definition without affecting the main colour, unlike a wash. We can also be more deliberate about where the paint or wash goes on the miniature. When you've done that, let's take it a step further using some Reichland Flesh Shade. So don't be surprised if after you've done all your recess shades, things are looking a bit messy. Don't worry, just use some of that Uriel Yellow and this will actually help create some interest in places. It's now time to show you how to highlight. So I want to go into some detail about highlighting now, because it's one of those techniques that I feel if you can do well, then you can paint anything. It's also a great way to improve your hand-eye coordination and practice your brush control. Whenever I'm highlighting, I like to keep a brush separate so I know I have a nice point to it when I come to use it. And when thinning your paint for highlighting, I find I don't use as much water as I normally would if I was layering, as we won't be applying multiple layers. I then remove some of the paint on some kitchen paper which is going to help us keep control of our paint and prevent those thick blobby lines. 
Our first highlight is going to be a chunky highlight and this wants to be quite a thick line so it can still be seen when we apply thinner highlights later. The colour I'm using is Flash Kitsch Yellow and you want to paint these lines along any edges and around any details and I'm almost using the side of my brush for this to get the thickness I'm after. This highlight is really going to help define all those shapes and start to bring out all the details and panels of the armour. The next highlight we're going to paint is an edge highlight using Phalanx Yellow. This highlight is going to be thinner than our first highlight we did and to make them easier to paint you can use the edge of your brush and run it along the edges to paint the highlights. If you have places you can't do this then just take your time painting thin lines along those edges to create the highlight. This can be quite difficult to do and it takes a lot of time and practice to get really good at it. But it really does make a difference in bringing out any details on your miniature. The last stage of highlights is going to be a spot highlight. I'm going to use some dawn yellow to bring out all the more prominent edges. If you want to get fancy you can paint some scratches and chips in the armour using phalanx yellow. And I find having almost no paint on your brush really helps with this. So you're probably thinking that those are a lot of stages to highlight in, and you're absolutely right. But I'm all about showing you the possibilities. But if that isn't your thing, then you can absolutely get away with just maybe painting one highlight. Your miniatures are still going to look great. You should always go at the pace you're comfortable with. But just know that I believe you're absolutely capable of the same level of painting that I do in these tutorials. And I know this because I can do it. After finishing the power armour, I always like to get all the metallic details painted, so that's what we'll be doing next. Go around your miniature now, painting any details you want to be silver with lead belcher. Create the definition with some Norn Oil on these areas. Highlight the edges and details of Stormhost Silver. If you have any details you want to paint gold, start with some Retributor armour. Then give the gold a wash with some Reichland Flesh Shade. I like the gold with Stormhost Silver as well. With the metals finished, let's work on all the other details and decide which company our marine belongs to. In this section, I'll be showing you how to get all the armour details finished and choosing which company your marine belongs to. First off, the Chest Eagle. Paint the base colour using Pink Horror making sure to get that solid colour. Next apply some Norn Oil to bring out all the detail. Finish the chest eagle with a fine highlight using Emperor's Children. So we now want to choose which company our Imperial Fist belongs to and depending on which company you choose will determine what colour the shoulder pad trim will be. The most renowned and regularly seen are the third company with their red coloured trim. Start with some Evil Sun Scarlet, paint a chunky highlight using Wild Rider Red and finish the trim with Fire Dragon Bright for the highlight. The next company you're likely to see is the black trim of the fifth company. Use some Abaddon Black to begin with, then use some Eshin Grey for the chunky highlight and Administratum Grey for the edge highlight. And if you really want to know how to paint the second company, well, it's just yellow. You're now going to want to know how to get any guns and other details to get your Imperial Fist finished. For the gun casing, paint this first of all using a bad and black. And to make this stand out and look different to how we painted the 5th company trim, our chunky highlight can be painted with Dark Reaper and then Dawnstone for the edge highlight. Paint any belts and pouches, I like to start with some dry bark for the base colour. I then paint a chunky highlight with storm vermin fur along the edges and raised folds you may see. Finish with a fine highlight using carrick stone. I like to finish these details with some storm vermin fur to paint little scratches and lines to give the leather some texture. So I've just remembered the armour joints. Use Eshin Grey on all the raised ridges first of all. Then the highlight can be painted using Dawnstone. So to finish our Imperial Fist, all that's left are the lenses and the helmet. And the way I like to paint these is to start with some Ulfman Grey just in the centre of each lens. I then like to use some Athematic Blue Contrast over this to give a glowing effect. 
The last thing to do is to assemble all the parts and for this I like to use super glue because I don't want to damage the paint with poly cement. As I said at the beginning, Imperial Fists are my favourite chapter and I'm really glad I've been able to share with you how I paint them. So let's see how this marine turned out. Our Imperial Fist is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel, including how to apply the transfers and other Space Marine chapters. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.